Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about trig. And uh, what I'm about to do here is just a little lesson for worksheet 4.1 that's going to help you to understand uh, how to do this worksheet. It is not meant to be a full, long lesson that covers everything. I'm going to kind of just cut right to the chase, uh, and here's how you are doing these kinds of problems. All right, so first of all, on worksheet 4.1, we are asked to, for each angle, to draw the terminal side of the angle and the correct quadrant. Well, first of all, you got to understand what the terminal side of an angle is. So I'm going to make, that's that's the starting side of an angle, and then the terminal side, I'm going to make this kind of pinky-colored line. And uh, so if I were to take this line right here and open it up, now I've got about 30 degrees, 60, and about 90 degrees. That's if it's in degrees, okay? But if I'm talking in radians, this is like half of a pie, and this is a whole pie. A pie is like 180 degrees. So I think if we started talking about 180 degrees, you'd understand that that's what pie is. Pi is 180 degrees. So this, all the way opened up angle, that is theta, that is our central angle, and that in this case is pi. All right, so where the heck would two-thirds of a pi be? Well, if this whole thing is one pi, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna just leave it there for a second and say, that would be about one-third of a pi, okay? Two-thirds of a pi would be about this. That's two-thirds of the whole deal, all right? And so that's where two-thirds pi should be. So I'm going to put my little pinky angle here right about there. And just picture that being two-thirds of the way to here. That's where one whole pi would be. All right, so two-thirds pi. All right, so now what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to draw a reference triangle and label the reference angle. Well, the reference triangle is this triangle that goes like this. Okay, and what is this for anyway? Why are we doing this reference triangle? Well... If you in the past have always done things like sine of 30 degrees, and you might have even noticed that you never did anything as big as 90, you always were working in triangles, and so the angles couldn't be bigger than 90, right? In fact, they couldn't even be 90. So they had to, the most they would work up to like 89.9 degrees, and as soon as you went over that, you just couldn't do it anymore. Well, the problem is we have to be able to do things, things like sine of 120 degrees. So how are you going to do that when you don't have a triangle that has an angle as big as 120? Because if it's a right triangle, the angles have to stay less than 120. So that's why we're making these reference angles, because you can do a triangle that has an angle of bigger than 120, uh, or big, uh, as big as 120, for instance. So if the angle goes to 120 like this, so this is 120 degrees, also known as 2 pi over 3, uh, then your resulting triangle here that you get, this reference triangle, that triangle helps you answer the question, what would sine of 120 degrees be? Because if you use this angle right here, that's called the reference angle, that happens to work exactly the same. So if I, for instance, wanted sine of 120, this angle right here, this has to be 60, because then these guys add up to 180 so that happens to be exactly the same as sine of 160. Sorry, not 160. Sine of 60. So that's why we're doing these reference triangles. And if that kind of is going over your head for right now, that's okay. I just needed to give you a little bit of perspective of why we even care about the reference angle. It's going to be used later when we figure out sine of angles or cosine or tangent of angles that are bigger than 90. So if 2 thirds pi was to right here, 2 pi over 3, otherwise known as 2 thirds pi. Then what do we have left right here? Well, if the total adds up to 180 degrees or pi right here, then this must be 1 third of a pi left. See, because 2 thirds plus the 1 third would add up to a whole pi. So that angle right there is our theta, our reference angle, would be 1 pi over 3. All right. Let's move on to this one and take a look at this one just to make sure you're getting this. So if I wanted to have uh, theta equal to 3 fourths of a pi, well, I'm going to put on my lines again. I'll uh, use the blue one for the bottom one again. So there's my initial side. My terminal side is going to be this one. And how much do I want it open? I want it to be 
section here. I want this one open to three-fourths of a pie. Well, here's whole pie. So this would be one-fourth of a pie, two-fourths of a pie, three-fourths of a pie would be right there. All right? So if that's three-fourths of a pie, then my reference triangle is this guy right here. And what is its angle right here, then? Well, if this was three-fourths of a pie, then this what's left is one-fourth of a pie. So there's my reference triangle, and I have labeled the reference angle. All right. That's how you do that kind. Now, I'm going to move on to the next type of problem here. Um, what if they're negative? Well, a negative angle goes the opposite way. So, for instance, this one, if I have my starting side and my terminal side, remember when I was opening it up before, I was always going like this way. That's so what's that be like? 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, or we got to get you used to radians here now. So that would be half of a pi or a whole pi, okay? What if I go this way? This could be like negative 30, negative 60, negative 90 degrees. Or as you're getting used to radians, this would be negative half of a pi. This would be negative a whole pi because I went around the bottom here. That's what makes it negative, all right? So uh, where is negative pi over 3? I like to think of that as one-third of a pi. Do you get what I'm saying here, that this is one-third of a pi? And if the whole pi goes all the way around, one-third of a pi will go like this, okay? So there is, ne there is negative one-third of a pi. And now, what's the reference triangle for that one? Well, it's like this. In fact, this triangle actually works, all right? So, my angle, I'm going to hold pause just a second here. Okay, I'm back from the pause. Uh, basically, this is my reference triangle, and my angle is one-third of a pi. It's not negative one-third of a pi, just because reference angles have to always be positive. All right, so this, if, if I was just to ask you, does that look kind of like oh, 60 degrees to you? It should look like about 60 degrees to you. Would you have ever said that looks like negative 60 degrees? Because if you remove the context in which we drew the angle, you would just say, oh, that's a 60 degree angle. And if that's a 60, this is probably a 30, because that's a 90. Because you always like a 30, 60, 90 triangle when you're drawing these things. So bottom line is that angle right there is one third pi, otherwise known as pi over three. And it is positive because in a reference triangle, you never use negative angles. All right, so let's try one more over here. Let's look at some 14. Also one of these kind with a negative angle given to us at the beginning. And if I start my angle with my initial side, it being this blue one here, and then I say this pinky one is going to be my uh, terminal side. So then if I open it up, again, let's think in terms of radians. This would be 180, otherwise known as pi radians. This would be half of a pi. This is one fourth of a pi. Where would five fourths of a pi go? Well, I would start by saying the fourths. This is one fourth of a pi. Two fourths, three fourths, four fourths of a pi. See where I'm going with this? And five fourths of a pi would have to be up here. And so the angle's really wrapping around here. It's going to there. And that's what negative five pi over four would be. Now, this angle that's left, this is the one that's going to make my reference triangle. Okay? So if that's my reference triangle, then the little angle I have is right here. Now, don't think in degrees now. you got to think in terms of what part of pi do I have left here? One-fourth of a pi, one-half of a pi, etc. Well, if you know the whole thing all the way over around here, that's a whole pi. How much is this piece right here? It's one-fourth of a pi. Okay, so here's my triangle, and this piece right here, this angle right there, would be one-fourth of a pi, or pi over four. All right? And the back side, or no, I'm sorry, this is tomorrow's worksheet. So I guess that's all I got for you.